It's Friday, and my name is Nick, and we're here to talk about products. Your host with the most has abandoned his post, so you're going to be seeing a lot more of the creative technologists and a lot more of this, the Robert Cowan Memorial Box Wall. Moment of silence, please. Thank you. All right, let's talk about products. Our first product is the LSM 303C Sixtoff IMU. A Sixtoff IMU can also be called a 3D compass module because it's not only aware of its orientation in relation to Earth's magnetic field because of the magnetometer, but also to Earth's gravitational field because of the accelerometer. That means that it can detect its tilt and compensate for that and tilt can throw a spanner into your readings if you're just using a regular magnetometer. This particular module has a full magnetic range of up to 16 gauss and a selectable full range for acceleration between two, four, and eight g's. That's eight times acceleration due to Earth's gravity. This is the kind of module that I might use for a land-based autonomous vehicle possibly in concert with something like a GPS module, where you don't need that rotational acceleration data that you would get from a gyro, so you don't need like a nine-doff board, but you still need the acceleration data in order to tilt compensate the compass data that you're getting. This is the CAN bus shield. It attaches to an Arduino and lets you read and write messages to the CAN bus. Now, CAN stands for Controller Area Network, and it was started by Bosch back in 1983. This is a messaging protocol system that lets the various microcontrollers and sensors within a vehicle to talk to each other. It uses a differential pair, much like USB, but it also allows for multiple masters on the bus like I2C. The CAN bus shield uses a microchip MCP2515 CAN controller and microchip MCP2551 CAN transceiver. It also has a DB9 port so you can connect a serial to OBD2 cable. On it is a micro SD card slot if you want to log information from your card to it and a spot for a serial LCD connector. It also has a GPS port and a place for a five-way switch. The update to the CAN bus shield includes the addition of R3 headers as well as some jumpers so you can use different OBD cables and some jumpers so you can select between various types of GPS units. What we can do is we can read various aspects from the car. In this case, I'm going to be pulling miles per hour as well as the revolutions per minute of the engine. I've attached the CAN bus shield to an Arduino redboard and I've made this simple display using a seven segment as well as a few LEDs. The seven segment has been reversed so it reflects in the windshield so we can read our miles per hour without having to look down at our gauges. In addition, the lights will light up in a relative fashion to show the RPM of the engine. Now, I've programmed it so that the lights light up in sequence with your RPM. You want to shift generally in green or yellow if you're trying to be economical in your gas usage. And red, of course, is your redlining your engine. Classic Sean. Well, the last thing we're going to talk about today is the MIDI Shield. Now, the MIDI Shield is a rev of a product that we've carried for some time now. And I can hear a lot of you already thinking, why are you still carrying a MIDI Shield? After all, MIDI, or Musical Instrument Digital Interface, is a standard that's been around since the early 80s. Do people still use it? Well, the answer is yes. Because of the simplicity and the portability of the standard, it's been stuffed into all sorts of equipment, from lighting controllers to music controllers and all sorts of things that you wouldn't expect. So whether you're hacking a pre-existing MIDI device or you just want to hook your Arduino up to your friend's sweet retro keyboard, this is the device that you're going to want to use. Now, as you buy it, it's a kit of parts. But once you solder it together, it looks like that and it's your popular Arduino shield shape. You just pop it right on top of your Arduino Uno or your Redboard or whichever Arduino compatible device you want and you'll be able to talk MIDI to all sorts of devices. There are also a number of open source libraries that'll help you do this so you don't have to get down into the nitty gritty of how MIDI actually works. 